Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in uh, well, stormy again, Central California, which is good. We, we need the rain. And uh, hello to all my other hospital network admin buddies out there. There's uh, actually a few. And everybody that's uh, an up and coming uh, network admin or wanting to be one, uh, good, good morning. It's early and uh, glad you guys are joining me. I'm glad I'm uh, inspiring some others out there to um, not only, you know, pursue this career path, but maybe uh, fearlessly follow the Lord. So um, hope, hope we can do a little of both. I'm a little more gussied up today. It's a kind of a somber occasion. I have a funeral to go to later. Um, man that was, uh, I don't know, just an um, amazing teacher, uh, an amazing godly man, uh, passed away due to complications caused by COVID. And uh, he's going to severely be missed or sorely be missed. He's the, uh, if you ever heard of the Institute of Principal Studies, uh, IPS ministry, that's, he was the head of that. And uh, it's, a, it's a big loss. Anyway, um, what I was going to talk about today is uh, how we connect our remote sites, uh, how our WAN works. And uh, so to do that, I am going to share my screen. Uh, where are you? And which window do I want to share? I like that one. Let's go ahead and share that. There we go. So um, let me get my other little notepad over here. That one's got a little too much info. I don't want to share this up the uh, the main drawing because uh, I don't want y'all knowing all my IP addresses or our office locations. Sorry, that's just how I roll. So basically, what we do is is uh, the county that we work for provides a WAN connection for me. So I have uh, my, my, okay, and before I go any farther, this tool I'm using is called Intermapper and we can use it to, uh, to uh, not only diagram our network, but also to monitor it. You can, uh, I've talked about it in some other videos, um, but yeah, you can put in all kinds of monitors for, for switches, routers, servers, um, you can monitor bandwidth, you can monitor storage space on servers, you can monitor service running on services, uh, servers, services running on servers. Um, and all kinds of different SNMP uh, uh, network metrics and stuff. Pretty cool, pretty cool product. Anyway, I'm using just some very basic features of it here to, to, uh, to draw you a picture. So this router here, I'm just gonna say is our, uh, our core here at the hospital, hospital core. There we go. So this, this is our hospital core. And we've got some, some switches that uh, interface between us and the county. So we, we connect to these switches. These, and this switch is um, connected into the, the county cloud. And then the way we connect remote sites I'm gonna put this switch here because I might need it for something in a little bit here. Let me go ahead and attach that. The way we do our remote sites is they're connected to this county WAN. We had uh, we have a VLAN here that we um, that we put in. I'll just call it VLAN one. <laughs> no, not VLAN one. Let's do VLAN ten. How about that? So I'm gonna say what I do is. I have designated VLAN 10 in my hospital as my remote site uh, WAN. So anything I want to connect to, I'll put it on VLAN 10. And you know, VLAN 10, we'll just say has a layer three address of 10.10.10.1. Say so it doesn't really matter. Um, let me put that here. Uh, add some more text sorry guys i'm just sleepy this morning and if i was a better presenter i would be far more prepared so we'll say that i've created that well i have created it i'm just not going to tell you what it actually is <laughs> so i'm going to say that uh, vlan 10 has created layer 3 on this this our core and it's got this ip address so that's effectively the gateway for my for my WAN. So what I'll then do is uh, we'll go out to our remote site. You know, we'll install a 
a switch or a router out there. And we'll give it, give the router an address of, uh, let's say two. So one of the problems is that, um, here, I'm gonna put the VLAN 10 right here. No, I'll leave it there, that's okay that uh, my VLAN 10, which is a phony baloney VLAN I'm just making up for this, but the VLAN I'm actually using um, is also used elsewhere in the county. So the county guys can't say, all right, we're gonna extend VLAN 10 all the way through the WAN because this cloud has a bunch of other switches and routers in it that belong to the county. So what they do is I'm gonna say they, they give me VLAN I don't know what we call it, just say 150. And they put VLAN 150 wherever I need it to be and say, that's, that's the hospital WAN. Wherever VLAN 150 is, that's the hospital WAN. So, but here's the problem. I'm using VLAN 10. So those are two different VLAN tags. How do we make that work? Through the way I connect, through, through, through the way I set up this interface. So on the county side, um, they, they, they. Uh, here, let me just type it. So they present that VLAN to me on their port on their switch as VLAN 150 tagged, which it's a trunk port, right? It would be tagged, of course. But what I do is, and this is where you're gonna have to press the I believe button because this is the way we do it in the extreme world. Uh, thank you to uh, Ms. Scotty for giving me that, uh, that phrase. One of the extreme networks instructors in a class I attended I always used that terminology, press the I believe button. So what we do in the extreme world is we have this concept of an untagged port. There's tagged ports and untagged ports. So tagged port is gonna be like the Cisco guys, a trunk port. An untagged port, the best way I can describe it would be a, an access port. Um, so I'll present VLAN 10 here untagged and it'll go in here. And so my traffic come in here We'll just automatically fall into VLAN 150 on his side. Sounds crazy, right? It works. So, and then through his routing, he's gonna get me out. It's just all layer two, he doesn't care. So by the time this traffic gets out here to this switch, it's gonna hit 10.10.10.2. So that'll be my first, that'll be one of my remote sites. And then I can have another remote site. Like this. And that's how we roll. We just keep adding them on. And as long as they plug into this cloud and he's got it, we plug into VLAN 150 and I give it the right layer three that's not gonna conflict with anything else. All I've got to do is just tell this guy, your default gateway is 10.10.10.1 and all their internet traffic, all their data traffic is all gonna come back here to me. And then I can route it wherever I want from there. So one other cool way of doing this is um, we're spinning up some uh, a new WAN site and um, it's gonna take a while for the, for the building to be ready. So what we have done is basically this. Now this is this is back here in my data center at the hospital. So we'll change this to four. And we're gonna attach to here. And what we've basically done
are you? There you are. What we basically done is this. So I've just told him to set up a, his trunk port, tag it on VLAN 10. The port I'm giving him, I've tagged it on VLAN 10. And uh, so now down here, he can go ahead and start setting up all his VLANs, whatever he wants them to be, all his subnets, whatever he wants to be. And whatever all those are, I just add one route in here. What's to say they're going to be um, uh, let's just do this. So we've, we've given him 10.11, this 10.11 subnet. So you can use any subnets under there in, in this, this slash 16. You can set all those up. So all I've got to do is set up a route in my, my quarters over here saying, if you want to go to this, That's where you go. So now any of these 10.11 networks are gonna head here. What's nice about that is when it comes time, he can just, when their building is ready, he can just grab his switch, move it out there, his router, move it out there and boom. There he is, he's out there. The only thing he has to do is change this VLAN 10 here. He has to actually change to 150. And boom, he's done. Meanwhile, he's set up all his subnets in here, in his access, which is in his router. You know, his user subnet, his printer subnet, his wireless subnets, whatever. We know, we don't care. We just say, hey, if you want to get to any of those subnets, you just go out there. And since we had set it up, since I'd set up my WAN inside and had him connected to it, it's already up and working. So anyway, that's kind of uh, that's kind of how we do our WAN here. I don't know if it's the best way or the worst way or clever or not, but that's the way we do it. And I hope that was understandable. Um, it's early and I'm sleepy, so I understand if it didn't quite make sense. So. If you have any questions about that, um, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them to the best of my abilities. So, um, yeah. Well, that's all we got for this week. So if you, uh, if you like this content, click your subscribe button, hit your notification bell if so desired. And, um, yeah, that's uh, that's it. Hey, where, where, wait, wait a minute. Where, where am I? Hang on. I've got to. There we go. Sorry. Like I said, it is early, and these are all one takes. So, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, hope you guys have a great week. We'll catch you next week. God bless. <laughs>